Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here today. We're going to continue on our expository teaching series out of Psalm 118. We're on Psalm 118, verse 13, and we're going to look at that. It says, Thou hast thrust sore at me that I might fall, but the Lord helped me. And so our enemies, they attack us. They're constantly with words or plotting against us. Satan is attacking us, and he'll use people to attack us. But God helps us. He is the Holy Ghost helper. That is the paraclete, the one that comes alongside. And then you go to Psalm 118, verse 14. The Lord is my strength and song and has become my salvation. So God is our strength. Through him we can do. That means endure all things. He's also our song. Singing, and this is a whole other subject for a whole other video, is very powerful. Singing to youth when they're malleable, formable, it is fantastic. God, Deuteronomy 32, Colossians 3, Ephesians, He used singing, teaching, and admonishing one another. Psalms, hymn, and spiritual songs. So it's not just about worship, it's about teaching. So God is our song. It's a powerful thing to sing. Very powerful. Helps with memory. And has become my salvation, my Yeshua. He's become my Jesus. So Jesus is our help eternally and here on this earth. The term saved has a present tense connotation, not just an eternal salvation, but being saved from our enemies, saved out of certain situations. Paul told the group on the boat in Acts 28, you know, except these men stay in the boat, you cannot be saved. He was talking about Acts 2.38. Necessarily, he was talking about you can't be saved from destruction and the storm. So let's go to verse 15. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. Now look, are you rejoicing? Paul told us, rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. You and I as Christians, we should be rejoicing people. That is an attitude of joy, love, joy, the second fruit of the Spirit, but it's also an action that we express our joy. And that we should be excited about living for Jesus. So, the voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the, of the righteous. We give voice to our salvation. We shout unto God with the voice of triumph. We share this glorious gospel with other people. And the right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. Now, God is a spirit. So a spirit hath not flesh and bones, you know, so he doesn't have a literal right hand. That's talking about his power. God's power, that part of him that works in his humanity, doeth valiantly. So we've got the Holy Ghost on the inside of us. We can do valiant things for Jesus. And we need some people with courage and valor here in this end time hour in, in apostolic realms. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. His power is over all. He's already won the victory over death, hell, and the grave, and the devil. The gates of hell can't prevail against the truth. And the church, excuse me, the right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord, it's reemphasized, do it valiantly. So, be valiant for the truth in the earth. And then this proclamation by the psalmist, Psalm 118, 17, I shall not die but live and waste my life playing video games. It doesn't say that. I shall not die but live and waste my time just screaming over my football team. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Declare the works of the Lord. Man, tell your personal testimony. Acts 20, 20 vision. You know, tell what God has done in your life. What you've seen and heard. What he's done in other people's lives. What he's done in church. What he did for people in the Bible. Because he's not a respecter of persons. And he's the same yesterday and today and forever. He is the Lord. He changes not. He is immutable. So, I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Verse 18, the Lord hath chastened me sore, but he hath not given me over unto death. Now, the chastening of the Lord, that's an entirely another subject, a topic for another time. But needless to say, Hebrews 12 talks of the chastening of the Lord as a wonderful thing. It says, lift up the hands that hang down and strengthen the feeble knees. It's talking about sometimes when we're out of the way, God will let circumstances come in our life for us to seek Him. And so, what father doesn't spank his child, the Bible says? Well, God, our Father, will spank us with circumstances. And sometimes we're blaming the devil and the enemy is us, as Walt Kelly said in Pogo. And uh, you're just undergoing the chastening of the Lord. 
So the Lord has chastened me sore, but He's not given me over unto death. Now we do know there are certain sins unto death, taking communion incorrectly, um, lying to the Holy Ghost. These are all examples of people dying. And if you continue with the Lord chastening you, I, I've seen it happen where God does that. Remember, God said, I would that you were hot or cold, but if you're lukewarm, He'll cast you out of His mouth. I've seen people when they totally backslide, it's like God has incredible mercy on them. It's like the prodigal son when they get out of the Father's house. But if they try to stay in church, oh, terrible things happen. What did Paul do to that guy that was sleeping with his mom in 1 Corinthians 5? He delivered him over to Satan for the destruction of the body that the soul could be saved. And uh, I get was it Alexander and uh, Hymeus? I can't remember who. Where Paul said, I've delivered them over to Satan that they may learn not to blaspheme. So the Lord hath chastened me sore, but he hath not given me over unto death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, and I will go into them, and I will praise the Lord. Now God is wanting a holy vessel. He doesn't look at the sacrifice of the wicked. Now not the imperfect. It says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. But if you're deliberately sinning, and you know in your heart you are, God doesn't accept that sacrifice. But if you're in sin and you're like, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, God's accepting that sacrifice. And God will change your life. So the gates of righteousness we need open. It's courts with thanksgiving. Gates with praise. This gate of the Lord into the which the righteous shall enter. Verse 20. And so the, the righteous enter into a gate the house of God. We're in the kingdom of God. We're born again of water and spirit. I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me and art become my salvation. So when you get saved, you've got the greatest thing in the universe. If you would shout, if you won a $5 million lottery, which you shouldn't be playing the lottery anyhow, but if you would shout if that happened, how much more should you live in a state of shouting and thankfulness because you're saved every day? God bless you. We're going to continue on. Keep studying and reading the Word.